Hey everybody, this is Alex, and in the spirit of last interviews with Alexei Vladishev, this time I decided to take a look behind the scenes of our support team. So today we're going to discuss how the guys actually operate, how they're feeling in these trying times, how excited they are about Zavix 5.0 coming out, and just get a general feel of the philosophy behind the team. So joining me today, I have the one and only Dmitry Lambert, the one of our senior support engineers, consultants and trainers, and just a generally nice guy. Dmitry, welcome. So tell me. How are you doing? How's the family? How things are going for you? Hey, Alex. First of all, uh, glad to hear you. And uh, how's it going? Well, it's actually pretty interesting. These are crazy times, but uh, at the same time, of course, we don't stop the work. We don't stop our life. And it it was a little bit challenging in the beginning because all this experience, like working from home, not from the office, is something absolutely new. But I think we're doing just great. So, yeah, it's totally fine. Well, that's nice to hear. So, Mitri, at Zabbix, we kind of take pride of all of us being a part of one team and one family, right? So, and obviously, the support is no exception. Now, we don't always play by the same rules, so this is why I wanted you to talk me through the support team operation. So, if we were to take a look behind the scenes, well, we see. I mean, spoilers, sure, we use Zabbix ourselves, but that's not just it, is it? Of course, uh... Well, uh, the stuff of the support, the daily life of the support is at the same time simple and complicated. Um, We tend to keep things simple just to make sure that everything is understandable for everybody and it functions fine. So starting with the Zabbix, uh, of course, we also use it. So um, just like a technical support, we also have a place for uh, our request tickets from our customers, which in our case is uh, Jira Service Desk, which is 24-7 also monitored with our internal Zabbix system, just to make sure that we are notified as soon as one of our customers creates a new ticket in the ticketing system. But, um, of course, like notifications, how to handle them. And uh, before all this crazy time started, when we are working in the office, we had also like big screens on the walls uh, showing the currently, uh, let's say, active and ongoing tickets. So all the engineers can right away see if they have some some ticket to answer to. If just in case they are not no, let's say in in the same room and they don't see the screens there is also notification of course in the email uh, also in uh, communication platform we use push for that and let's say on some higher severity issues there is also a straightaway call on a mobile phone that you need to answer this uh, this issue something about that all right very nice so okay in order to continuously deliver support in a very consistent level and with integrity, so what additional measures have you guys introduced? And I'm not talking just about the SLAs and acknowledging tickets, right? So you try to deep dive into the actual issue. Isn't that it? Of course, like every new ticket, and it doesn't matter um, how complex it is, because some some users, some customers just want to get a quick uh, quick tip how to do this or that, and some other cases might be like extremely complicating. Uh, when we dive into real life scenario production instance that might be also configured with some clusters, high availability, and stuff like that. So in our daily life, in the life of the support, we we don't slim, simply throw the links to the documentations for for our customers. So it's always like a deep dive to understand what exactly is happening, what is the problem, uh, the root cause of the problem in this case. And we don't limit ourselves only on the Zabbix. So we understand that the Zabbix is a monitoring platform, but there are also a lot of uh, other tools and uh, software applications that are fully relied on this uh, process of monitoring. So we tend to also help, let's say, troubleshoot some uh, application or, or some other services that might be related to this existing happening problem. And at the same time, like if we talk about SLA, um, sure, we also do have an SLA, but uh, what for me, I believe is really important, like it's not just a regular uh, support where, let's say, you post some kind of the question and then you might wait for like 
day, two, or even a week to get initial response or just start moving forward with your problem. So in, in our daily job, we definitely don't leave uh, any ongoing issues, let's say overnight. So everything is answered as fast as possible. Uh, we don't leave any open uh, issues, tickets open where the last comment is from our customer. As soon as somebody comments, let's say there might be a really uh, heavy and problematic issue, which might be going like for weeks. And as soon as customer updates us on this issue, you will definitely hear from us in um, probably in next minutes or an hour if we are really busy. Excellent stuff. And I assume not every case is the same, right, as you mentioned. But, okay, let's take an ideal situation, right? So if a client decides to sign up with Zabbix, what can they actually anticipate? What sort of assistance? And, again, not just focusing on the tickets per se, as there's a lot more to it. Absolutely. Like, for the client, I think we are just just the greatest thing they could have because uh, you need to understand that uh, in the Zabbix support when you talk about the support engineers those guys are not responsible only for the support tickets for the Jira they're in the same hand also the consultants and trainers they also do the turnkey solutions for the customers which in some cases might be simple in other cases very complicated so each guy from our team has like huge experience with the monitoring and uh, not specifically with the Zabbix, but with the monitoring at all. So when some customer, potential customer, comes to the Zabbix with a question like, hey, you know, we decided that we want to monitor our infrastructure, that is fully okay that they know that they want to do that, but they don't know how. They don't know what they need to monitor, how frequently, what should be the triggers, how should they be not notified about the problems. So we are the experts in the monitoring. And uh, this will be our helpful hand to them uh, to solve their problems, to suggest architecture, how the Zabbix uh, should be installed, uh, what kind of data should you collect from your devices, how you should configure your actions, whether that should be a notification only on email or maybe in this particular case, it would be better to integrate Zabbix with some ticketing system to also automatically uh, report about the problem. So let's say the NOC team of the company can react as fast as possible. And uh, on the other hand, there also are some cases when a potential customer is not that new in the life of the monitoring. So he might be moving from some other monitoring uh, application to the Zabbix, so just doing the migration. And it's fully understandable that they don't know how the Zabbix actually functions. And they have only one request, like we have this tool, we collect this data, and we want to have everything just like we have now inside the Zabbix. So how can you help us? And um, it's a big process for our engineers to deep dive in all that installation and check how everything goes, uh, which stuff we can migrate like one to one exactly as it was. And in some cases, even like if we could migrate directly without performing any changes, if we see that within the Zabbix we can do the same stuff, but a lot better, then of course we will also suggest to the customer that we might uh, change how this stuff works for the better. Nicely done. All right, Mitri. So I'm proud to say that you've been with the team for quite a while now. So with your previous experience and new requests coming in constantly, were there any cases that were, let's say, in your opinion, more interesting than the others or challenged you to the core that you actually had to sit down and think, not just for a minute, but to actually, well, let's say, perhaps review your entire um, approach towards problem solving? Of course, like um, all the requests, uh, we could probably say the more, more complicated ones are the ones which are just bigger scale, right? Zabbix can monitor like, uh, let's say, a couple of hosts at your home where we might be talking about hundreds of thousands of instances in the production without a uh, chance to, let's say, restart the system or do some kind of maintenance operations on the fly. And it's always challenging, uh, especially if we have some customers with uh, high availability setups, cross data center high availability setups, replication, uh, master master or master slave, doesn't matter, um, some kind of integrations with, uh, let's say, 
as example, ticketing systems, inventory tools, uh, maybe some API integrations with uh, external scripts to collect some kind of the data. All of that is always um, quite a complicated and it takes some time to really understand uh, what is happening on and what uh, how that environment looks like. But at the same time, uh, when we have some, let's say, more simple requests, when just the beginners of the Zabbix ask a simple things like, how can I monitor this and that in our system? It's very important for us to understand that, okay, for us, maybe this request is uh, quite a simple, but for our customer, it's very important and they want to receive like a uh, full exp explanation how they can achieve their uh, expectations or how to fix their problem and not simply like throw on them documentation link uh, which would describe what item is and how you can use it. Very well put. All right, Mitri, let's talk about the community. Now, in your experience, again, you've been to customer sites, uh, you met our users at all the events that we host and join, uh, be that face-to-face -face or remotely. So, what would you say were the coolest use cases you've seen that perhaps you would not initially even associate with Zabbix? You know, all these cases are very interesting. Uh, we all know that Zabbix is super powerful and we can really monitor whatever we want. But at the same time, like mostly when we think about a Zabbix, when we work with the customers, in most cases, we are talking about those uh, regular IT stuff like the servers, network switches, services, applications, databases, uh, stuff like that. But hearing those uh, not common cases is just perfect and interesting. As example, um, maybe somebody already shared this from from. Uh, my colleagues, but uh, in, in one office in the Denmark, if I'm not wrong, uh, the company had uh, something kind of smart windows in the office. So they were opened and closed uh, via computers. And all of that stuff was also monitored by the Zabbix for a simple, simple purpose. Like if it's not a working time and nobody should be in the office right now, then, uh, and Zabbix noticed that the window is still open, then what would Zabbix do without notifying uh, some security guy or somebody else simply automatically close the window? Um, that's one case. Another one uh, that's also in my mind, like uh, web monitoring. It's not a big deal for the Zabbix. Uh, we can monitor web pages and web applications out of the box. But uh, that particular case was uh, monitoring not only availability of the web page as, as a web server, but uh, their business was to, um, let's say, you, well, just like a Netflix, right? You pay money for a subscription or a one-time use, and then you can go to the web browser and watch the movies. And they did not care if uh, the web browser opens or the web page is running and returns uh, HTTP code 200. They cared that the movie is actually playing because it's, not that uncommon that we open some page, maybe YouTube or whatever else, and uh, the page opens, but the video doesn't play. And it's, it's a problem that has to be solved. So they were also using the Zabbix uh, with uh, third-party tools integrated together with the Zabbix to basically take uh, a lot of the screenshots of the area where the video should be playing, and then within the the logic of the of the scripts check whether does these pictures screenshots are actually changing is the color changing and that was the case how they uh, could tell is the video actually playing or not so i don't know these two uh stick in my mind is uh, quite an interesting things done with as Zabbix and might not be the most common ones the creativity of our users really never ceases to amaze me so all right mate let's take a very quick stroll down the memory lane Right, so I mentioned that you've been with the team for quite a while, but when you first joined, you weren't instantly a master, which is quite okay. So over time, you've obviously learned quite a lot. So looking back at yourself right now, what advice would you give yourself and also to any potential users of Zabbix? Well, when I started to work in uh, in a Zabbix company, it was for sure very challenging because uh, surprising or not, but I really didn't have any experience with a Zabbix as a software. Okay, I did have some experience with the related stuff like uh, Windows, Linux, some, some network stuff, but not with the Zabbix. 
and uh, what it took for me to, let's say, start to understand uh, what we're talking about. Um, a lot of work, a lot of following through all the support cases, uh, cases with the customers, because that, of course, also gives you huge experience. Like you can read a lot of the Zabbix book, books that you can find in the Internet, uh, watch the videos, uh, read documentation, but none of that will give you like the real experience that you can um, get and collect from real life cases from different customers, different uh, solutions and needs. And uh, also, uh, Zadix training, of course. So when I just started to work in, in a Zadix company, just after a couple of weeks, I was sent to uh, internal training, the specialist and the professional course, which was uh, actually very challenging um, simply because I did not have any experience. Um, but it was also just an awesome, awesome course, a lot, tons of uh, information and knowledge. It was uh, quite a challenging to, let's say, go through all of that stuff, prepare for the exams and thankfully pass them successfully. So what I could suggest for somebody else who are just starting with a Zabbix, uh, probably don't be afraid of, uh, let's say, doing the stuff which is not familiar for you. Um, install a Q&A dev setup with a Zabbix. Try it on your own if something doesn't work. Try to fix it. Uh, try to create some ways how to collect the data. Like if you want to monitor some kind of service or the database and uh, you cannot find like ready to apply solution, try to create your own. Um, even if you will not succeed like on the 100 percent, there's definitely you will definitely learn a lot of new stuff that will help you further on. And of course, trainings like uh, 5.0 is released, um, how many? week ago, probably. Uh, and uh, yeah, a new training program with the new features, a lot of them extensive materials. So you should also definitely take a look in thisavix.com. Maybe there is a uh, shuttle training near to you. So you should definitely attend. Well, there you have it, folks. That's advice from one of our senior engineers, Dmitry Lambert. So thank you very much for joining me. It's been a blast having you. And uh, I hope you have a great day and the family is doing well. As for the rest of you guys, feel free to check out 5.0 while it's still fresh <laughs> and still awesome. Feel free to register for our webinars to get more technical insight on what the actual product brings. And I hope you enjoy it. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Take care.